So what I'm testing just now, as you can see, the, the total net leakage is fluctuating wildly, 18 milliamps, uh, and it fluctuates wildly. You can see it constantly changing and moving, right? Yep. Which is taking in my, in or this installation, but also the street and um, the supply yep. installation. And if, and on just the main earthing conductor to the consumer unit, it's 10, stable, and, and it's not, it's not moving. It's, the installation is, is live and working now, but it, there's nothing, it's not fluctuating like it is um, on the total. Natural protective conductor current leakage. Protective current conductor leakage, which I can also um, prove on this fluke meter as well, which we've clamped around the tails, just to prove that my leakage um, from the main consumer unit is the same. You can see uh, 0.1, yeah, so 10, 10 milliamps. 10 milliamps. Obviously, I've got my own reading set to milliamps, so 10 milliamps. So these devices are proving to me that the installation leakage is is stable. It's normal. Yeah, yeah, it's it's normal. normal. But my total net leakage with the Mega is fluctuating. Whilst these aren't dangerous levels, it's showing there is a difference. There is a discrepancy between uh, between the two um, figures and the two locations you know, where where it's coming from. Mm. And eventually, when that gets into the ampage level, that's when it becomes a bigger problem because it's a precursor to a full-on broken point. Where diverted neutral current will, you say in a few years, it might, you know, say maybe 10, 15, something, 20 years, that diverted neutral current will eventually break, or, an insta or the cable will deteriorate enough so much that dangerous voltages will appear. Yeah, they could. If you get a full broken pen, they will. In an installation, and if it's on three phase, it would be even more dangerous, they're almost 400 volts. So a dangerous level, a reading, Paul, that might be considered dangerous would be around three something amps um, if, if it, uh, on a total. My personal opinion, 3.6 amps, but there's some guidance in the yeah. ENA. Yeah. But 3.6 amps, anything, I mean, if you want to show you anything over, if you had a three phase installation, it'd be quite easy. You could quite easily get two or three amps yeah. of leakage. Um, but anything over 3.6 in a house, I would suggest you need to ring up the DNO and say. Uh, uh, so, 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 don't so, quote so, me on that. No, no, no. Right, this is just a quick video on um, what to expect, perhaps, on a on a three-phase installation uh, without any diverted neutral current. So this is this is a brand new supply uh, done by someone else. New three-phase uh, 100 amp incomer. Uh, there's the water supply, but they have it has been bonded, even though it comes in in plastic. There is the gas supply, and there's a protective bonding for the gas. You see, water come round. We've got our 100 amp isolator, so main protective conductor, uh, gas, water. That goes up to the sub the sub main, the sub panel, which does all the consuming units in this place, and then that does some steel. Um, currently. 30 something milliamps and that's across the whole installation so that you know that's really good natural leakage you'd get from various final circuits and accessories connected um here's my clamia it's not the fanciest it's not the most expensive but it does me fine um and so if i go over the main protective conductor so this is the net uh current just over an amp net protective conductor current, just over an amp. Uh, if I go on the gas, it's nothing, or relatively nothing. Water, relatively nothing. The next one does the sub-panel. There, just over an amp. Almost the same, to be honest, as the main protective conductor current. So, I don't. And there's no concern for me there that there's any diverted neutral currents. And then that's the steel. There's nothing there. So what I'm trying to say. So this is what to expect. Now I don't know if the guidance. See, that's where it all is, isn't it? So you know it's all from the, all the all, all the leakage, all the current, and it, it is coming from the um, natural final circuits. But this is on a perfectly fine installation but I don't know if there's going to be any guidance in the future when we do EICRs or any testing but um, in my opinion I might start doing this when I do an EICR and note it down 
somewhere on the certificate, you know, if I, what I've measured and where I've measured it, just in case you do come across it, because it's not something we've ever tested it for. And it's not something we're taught. I don't remember being taught any of this at college. So it's good to, um, I think it'd be a good idea. Um, and keep sharing it to show other people, because whilst I've not experienced it, it may happen in the future. It's probably bound to happen, and it's going to happen more frequently, so we should know.